The subcommittee will come to order. This afternoon, the Subcommittee on Public Lands and Forests will receive testimony on five bills addressing issues under the jurisdiction of the Bureau of Land Management and the Forest Service. The bills on today's agenda include S-1024, designating the Oregon Mountains and other public lands in New Mexico as wilderness, S-1090, designating certain lands in the Cherokee National Forest in Tennessee as wilderness, S-1144, to amend the Soda Ash Royalty Reduction Act of 2006 to extend the reduced royalty rate for soda ash, S-1149 to expand geothermal production, and S-1344 to direct the Secretary of Agriculture to take immediate action to recover ecologically and economically from a catastrophic wildfire in Arizona. The bills on today's agenda cover a variety of issues involved different states across the nation. However, they share a common trait in that each of these bills is extremely important to the states that are covered by the legislation. I know the two wilderness bills, for example, are the result of many years of work by the Senate sponsors and folks in the local communities. When this hearing was first announced, the Senate was scheduled to be in session today. However, since the Senate is now adjourned, several of my colleagues have left Washington to return home, so this hearing will perhaps be a little bit more abbreviated than most. We intend to include all of the written statements in the record. I'm pleased that we're joined today by heads of the two agencies involved with the legislation. I'd like to welcome BLM Director Bob Abbey and Forest Service Chief Tom Tidwell, who will give the Obama administration's views on all of the bills. The subcommittee has also invited Edward T. Flynn to testify on S-1140, the Soda Ash Competition Act. Mr. Flynn is the president of FMC Wyoming Corporation, a subsidiary of FMC Corporation. Mr. Flynn is also the general manager of Alkali Chemicals Divisions for FMC Corporation and has held this position since 2002. He's currently chairman and a board member of the board of directors for the American Natural Soda Ash Corporation and is also secretary treasurer and a member of the board of directors for the Industrial Minerals Association of North America. The subcommittee has also invited Mr. Scott Nichols to testify on S-1149, the Geothermal Production Expansion Act of 2011. Mr. Nichols is manager for lands and permitting at a major geothermal energy company, U.S. Geothermal, located in Boise, Idaho. Before coming to U.S. Geothermal, he's the environmental service manager for Brown and Caldwell, an environmental services firm in Boise, and served for 12 years before that with the Idaho Department of Lands. I'd just like to take a minute to discuss two of the bills, the soda ash bill and the geothermal bill that are especially important in my part of the country. Both of these bills have bipartisan support. Senator Risch and Senator Crapo are co-sponsors co of the geothermal bill, along with my colleague from Oregon, Senator Merkley. Senator Barrasso, Senator Enzi, and Senator Cochran are co-sponsors of the soda ash bill, along again with Senator Merkley. Both of these bills are aimed at the development of resources on public lands. My goal for both of these bills is to strike the proper balance between developing public resources to provide clean energy and jobs while ensuring that the interests of our taxpayers are protected. The geothermal bill would expand existing authority that the Secretary of Interior has under the Geothermal Steam Act to issue non-competitive leases for geothermal development. The reason for this is to allow a geothermal project, which is already under lease, to expand the boundaries of its project so that it can fully develop the geothermal energy resource that it has discovered. This will increase the amount of renewable energy that can be produced from the project and the amount of royalties that would be paid to the Treasury. The bill includes specific provisions to ensure that our gov U.S. government receives fair market value for these adjacent leases and receives annual rental payments equal to those that would be paid for competitive leases. The legislation also has the support of the Geothermal Energy Association, and I ask unanimous consent that a letter from the association be made part of the record. The soda ash bill would continue a policy put in place by this committee and the Congress in 2006 to provide a reduced federal royalty for soda ash that's produced on public lands. The reason for the policy then and the reason for continuing it now is that the soda ash market is an international market and some of our international competitors are trying to game this market. At the time Congress acted in 2006, China had adopted a policy of providing a rebate 
on its value-added uh, tax to Chinese exporters of a synthetic substitute for soda ash. Although China abandoned this practice in 2007, it resumed the rebates in April of 2009 and has continued them to this day. Without objection to bipartisan letters sent by members of the House and the Senate in 2009 and 2011, including myself and Senator Barrasso, who serves on this committee, to the U.S. Trade Representative and the Secretary of Commerce calling on them to raise this trade abuse with the Chinese government will be made a part of the record. The legislation is also supported by the Glass Packaging Institute, and without objection, a letter from the Institute in support of the bill will also be made part of the record. The current royalty rate authorization expires in October. It was my hope that the Congress would have the benefit of an economic analysis of the benefits of keeping American soda ash production competitive. It's my understanding that the Interior Department is still working on this report, which was required by the original 2006 legislation for this purpose. I look forward to the Department's testimony on this legislation, but the time is short for taking action to make sure that hundreds of millions of dollars in U.S. soda ash exports and the jobs they provide don't fall victim to unfair foreign trade practices because our government wasn't able to act. Finally, I want to raise one last concern of great importance for my state, and it involves uh, Director Abbey, who will be uh, here today. I have learned of some extremely serious errors that were committed by the Bureau of Land Management in estimating the 2011 county payments for the O and C counties. Incorrect level of funding was used to calculate these payments originally, and as a result, counties in my home state will be receiving some $11.6 million less in 2011 than they had planned on under prior estimates by the Bureau of Land Management. To make matters worse, when the Bureau of Land Management recognized this error in March of this year, they failed to notify the congressional delegation or the counties about this mistake. In fact, my office has yet to receive the corrected data or a response to a letter that I have sent uh, to the agency, to Mr. Abbey, on this matter. So we will have some uh, questions on this matter after uh, Director Abbey is here.